What's up everybody, this is Bruce, aka Geektacular, and today I've got another unboxing for you. Today I'm going to be unboxing the World of Warcraft Chronicle Volume 3 um, lore history uh, art book here. Um, but before I unbox that, I was just going to mention that there are actually, this is the third volume, there are actually two other volumes, um, which I have right here. Um, this is volume one, and this is volume two. So um, if you haven't read this series yet, I would highly recommend um, starting at, at the first one and then moving on to the second one before you read this third one, because they basically go through the history and the lore of World of Warcraft in chronological order um, in the sort of Azeroth timeline. So um, if you just pick up volume three, it may not make a ton of sense if you don't know much about WoW lore or anything like that. So uh, if you're thinking about picking up volume three, I would recommend picking up one and two first. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, if I tilt it up here, I got some of my collector's editions out um, because these actually uh, correspond, the styling of the books actually correspond to these collector's editions here, um, which a lot of people may not, may or may not know. I'm sure hardcore fans know this, but the original um, WoW collector's edition is uh, basically brown colored, kind of brown themed. And so volume one is also brown themed. And then uh, the second one is green. So the Burning Crusade Collector's Edition right here is basically has a green theme. So that's what the second one matches up with. And then the third book here, volume three, has a kind of a blue theme, which matches up with the Wrath of the Lich King Collector's Edition. Uh, as you can see there. So I just wanted to mention that in case you guys weren't aware that they kind of the coloring scheme of these Wor World of Warcraft Chronicle books basically match up with Blizzard's uh, collector's editions in the past. So with that being said, go back down here and let's actually crack this thing open and take a quick look. So I'm not going to show you every single page. Um, because if you, if you want to read it that much, um, you can obviously, uh, pick it up and read through it ad nauseum, but I just want to give you kind of a quick idea of what is inside of here. So it comes in this plastic wrap and it does have a paper insert in the back and you can kind of see it there. Let me turn the lighting down slightly so you can maybe get a better look at it. A little washed out there. So yeah, so this is basically just kind of sitting in the back. I don't think it's attached in any way, but I'm going to go ahead and take the plastic wrap off and we will see sometimes it's got some of that uh, sticky stuff holding it on. Um, sometimes it's just kind of sitting inside of the packaging, but there's no other stickers or anything on the outside of the packaging. So let's see. Packaging is off, and let's see. So this is not held on by anything. This insert just comes out like that. Go ahead and show that to you, just in case you're interested. Nothing too exciting there. Um, and on the back of this, there is a UPC sticker on the back of this, um, as you can kind of see there. I'm wondering if it's peelable. Hoping it's peelable. Mm, it's not entirely peelable, so maybe I'll worry about that later. I think you can peel it off if you're really careful, but it's not one of those easy peel stickers. Um, and just so I can check real quick for you, let me see if the other... Yeah, see, like this is volume two. It does not have that sticker, or I managed to peel it off. One or the other, I don't recall. So there is that. I'll probably try to see if I can peel that off uh, a little bit later. But for right now, let's take a look at the outside. So as you can see, the cover is uh, matte with a really cool pattern on it that kind of makes it look like kind of an old journal or an old relic or something. And then the image here and the logo, as you can see when I run the light over it, those are both glossy. Um, and then this chronicle part's raised a little bit. It's not embossed, but when you run your finger over it, you can kind of feel it. 
So that's kind of cool. Give you a close up here. So yeah, uh, pretty cool artwork. Here is the side. Let's see if I can get it to focus. And this side matches up exactly with volumes uh, two and three or sorry, one and two. So you can line all three of them up and they have basically the exact same spine design, just with slightly different colors. Um, maybe I'll show you that at the end of the, uh, the video. And the back is just all matte, again, with kind of that compass um, sort of relic style look to it. So all in a, this like uh, blue themed here. So let us open this up. Okay, let me just tilt this down slightly so we can get kind of a better look at it here. Okay, and let me see if I can tilt it a little bit this way so you can see that as well. There we go, perfect. Okay, so yeah, so this is the inner uh, cover. It has a little bit of a map there. World of Warcraft Chronicles. So the pages are actually thick, glossy pages. And there is going to be a little sort of uh, whitewashing because of the lighting here. The light's kind of shining off the glossy paper, which is what that is. Um, I'll see if I can maybe tone it down a little bit to reduce the uh, glare. Because the glare is, you still want to be able to see it, but the glare is uh, on the pages kind of makes it hard to see. So sorry about that. Um, so here are the contents. So the Rising Darkness, the Third War, the Frozen Throne, Old Hatreds, the Burning Crusade, Wrath of the Lich King, and Cataclysm. So what this does is this basically follows um, the first two books. Um, the first book is kind of primordial history, old gods, things like that. Um, and then the second book kind of um, covers a lot of the original Warcraft story, um, kind of building up towards um, World of Warcraft. And then this one gets um, straight into World of Warcraft um, specifically, and it goes all the way uh, to Cataclysm. So um, where the first two kind of covered more of the Warcraft 1, 2, 3, and a little bit uh, dabbled in things that are familiar from World of Warcraft. All of that's kind of necessary to understand World of Warcraft, since all that lore, all that history came before the beginning of the MMO. So now they've kind of fully made it um, to WoW, and that's what they're covering here. And this covers, as, as I said, all the way through Cataclysm. So I don't think it covers anything past Cataclysm. So I'm hoping there'll be a fourth volume that'll have basically all the events since then. And one of the reasons, a lot of people say that this, they don't like these books because they retcon old information, um, old stories, things like that. It's mostly because World of Warcraft has been around or not World of Warcraft, but just the Warcraft universe, has been around for a really, really long time, like 20 to 30 years. Um, and that is a lot of storytelling by a lot of different people using the same universe, the same timeline, the same characters. And over that long of a span of time, things get mixed up, things get added in that don't make sense, things get removed, things get changed to fit the game or to fit a plot point that they want to, to have a raid or something about. And then, you know, and then the story kind of gets messed up because of that. So this is more of them kind of unifying all the past stories and putting them all together to make sense. So they do retcon some things in here, um, but it's more in the interest of a tying everything together in the past so that it makes sense going forward. Because I think they want to be a lot more strict about their lore and making sure that everything makes sense together. Um, so that's kind of why they're putting these books out, I think, as part of it. And part of it is just obviously to tell more stories, to, to give more cool artwork and give WoW fans something to look at as well. So it's a little bit of both, I think. Um, but I think a big part of it is kind of unifying all those years of storytelling into one cohesive uh, <laughs> lore story that makes sense. Um, 
So I wouldn't think of it as them getting away or getting rid of old plot points. I would just think of it as them taking all those all those old stories, all those old quests, lore, and things like that, and tying them all together and putting them all in one sort of kind of narrative. So I'm just going to flip through this here. I'm not going to read you much, um, you, but you can see all the title headings here. Battle of Grim Batol, Forgotten Oaths, um, and a lot, just so much, so much cool artwork here. Like this is uh, Alex Straza breaking free of her bonds and unleashing her vengeance on the Orc Necros Skull Crusher. So lots of cool artwork. Even if you don't, even if you're not that interested in the lore part, it just has a lot of really cool, unique, uh, exclusive paintings and stuff in here. So again, I'll just flip through it real quick. Another map here, the lands of Azeroth before the Thor Third War. So that's what you're seeing here. And you get your whole chapter on the Third War, the Scourge of Lordaeron, Ravages of the Plague, Calling of Stratholm, Arthas and Stratholm, blah, blah, blah. Sorry if this is not that interesting, but if you're interested in this book, I'm hoping maybe it will be of um, some unique interest to you. Arthas victory over Sylvanas and Quelt the Loss. It's funny, I've actually been playing this game for a really long time, since about 2006, so about 12 years, kind of off and on. Um, and I, you would think that I would be more familiar with kind of the lore and things like that since I played it for so long, but I'm kind of one of those people who I sort of sometimes have the bad habit of skipping, um, <laughs> skipping, uh, quest text and things so I can kind of get to what I'm doing. Um, I probably shouldn't do that. And I don't do that all the time, but I do have sometimes a bad habit of, of skipping over the lore part so I can get to the gameplay. Um, and in the interest of speed, since I think this book is over 200 pages, I'm just going to kind of flip through some of the remainders, some more paintings, The Ascension, Old Hatreds, Chapter 4. So this is the New World Tree, Founding of Duratar. I can hear, I don't know if you can hear it on the video, but I can actually hear the spine like crackling. I think it's just because it's a brand new hardcover book. Um, so that's Cthune. I never knew how to say his name correctly. I always thought it was Cthune. And AQ. Burning Crusade. So this covers, this should cover most of the lore from the Burning Crusade expansion specifically. Quilfing Reservoir. So it covers some of the actual raids. Um, dungeons, things like that. Black Temple, Fury of the Sunwell, Nether Dragons, and then it moves on to Wrath of the Lich King here. And then a bunch of Wrath stuff, Knights of the Ebon Blade, Invasion of Northrend, Nexus War. So this is stuff, this is stuff where if you play WoW, and even if you don't pay that much attention to the games, like sometimes I don't, um, you'll definitely recognize a lot of this stuff, uh, like the Nexus. If you played during Wrath of the Lich King, this place should be very familiar to you. Um, <laughs> flying around on those, uh, on those drakes there in that dungeon. Um, so yeah, map, Argent Tournament, Fall of the Lich Kings, so that's ICC lore here. The Dormant Throne. And then the Cataclysm, I believe is the last section here. The Unseen, Council of Three Hammers, the Shattering, Throne of Elements, Invasion of Gilneas, uh, Worgen are shown here, so Worgen lore. Um, Defenders of Hyjal, Battle Against the Elemental Forces of Ragnaros, Hyjal, Hyjal. <laughs> There's so many weird words in the WoW universe. I never, I always say them to myself, and I'm never quite sure if I'm saying them right. 
Ysera's vision of the Hour of Twilight with Deathwing impaled in Wormrest Temple. That is such a cool piece of art right there. Rage of the Firelands. So it goes through the entire um, Cataclysm expansion here. So this shows kind of um, the map after the Shattering of Azeroth, the Dragon Soul, the Hour of Twilight. Uh, rebuilding Stormwind after the Cataclysm. And so it ends with, um, let's see, the Age of Dragon Aspects and the Guardians of Tirith's Fall was over. The Horde and the Alliance had proved themselves capable of facing any force that threatened Azeroth. The world was now theirs to watch over, but whether they were ready for this responsibility was another question. The cycle of hatred that had consumed the Horde and the Alliance remained unbroken. Vanquishing Deathwing did not cause the two factions to reflect on their warmongering. To the contrary, the Black Dragon Aspect and the Twilight's Hammer defeated. The Horde and the Alliance now turned all their attention, all their wrath on each other to be continued. So that's the final sentence, the final paragraph of this book. So this does indicate that I think originally it was supposed to only be a three volume series, but this looks like um, we might be looking at a fourth volume, which would make sense because this only goes up uh, through Cataclysm. And there is uh, three additional <laughs> expansions and a fourth one incoming after that. Um, so it would make sense maybe if they had a fourth volume, they could finally actually catch up to where they are in the game, possibly. Um, since this one covers all of Cataclysm, they could do um, Mists and uh, Warlords of Draenor and Legion, and then the new expansion, or at least those three, all in a fourth volume. Or they could, they'll probably wait until after um after the new expansion comes out because they don't want to give away any plot points obviously so they'd have basically two options in for volume four it looks like uh the, you know uh based on what is included here is that they could either um they could either release a volume four uh sooner so before the end of the next expansion cycle before the Battle for Azeroth cycle expansion cycles over, they could release it before then and just include um, those expansions that I mentioned: Pandaria, Draenor, and Legion. They could have a book that was just dedicated to those three expansions, or they could wait a little bit longer, wait an, an extra year or so, and then put out Volume Four that covers those three and also the brand new expansion. Um, after we've already done everything in the game, and that would allow them to fully catch up. Either way, with the next volume, if hopefully it does come out, um, as this indicates. Um, so if it does, hopefully um, it'll get them basically caught up with the story. Um, and then maybe they could put together smaller versions of these um, for each expansion which would be cool, like at the end of each expansion cycle before the next one comes out, they could release a smaller chronicle um, that just tells the story of that one expansion, or they might wait, uh, you know, a couple years um, and kind of compile them together. So if you want to actually see these three together, I'll show you that now as well. Let's kind of stack them up here. So this is what they all look like stacked side by side uh, on their spine, exact same layout, exact same um, mat, and then the glossy name right here. So everything is identical, just different shaded, different color shaded. Volume one's brown, volume two's green, volume three is blue, just like the collector's editions. The backs of them, as you can kind of see here, are also have identical artwork on them, just different colors. So they really look cool. Um, all together. And yeah, this will, if you've been kind of ignoring a lot of WoW lore like I have over the years, uh, this is kind of a cool way to uh, to catch up on sort of what the main part of the story um, is, uh, kind of in a, in a succinct way, so you don't have to go watch hours and hours and hours of cutscenes or go back and try to figure out uh, all the stuff from the last 25 years. 
So yeah, thanks everybody for watching this. Uh, if you like this unboxing, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. That would be awesome. And if you like these kinds of unboxings, if you like WoW related unboxings, um, or if you just like video games, sci-fi, fantasy, um, if you like kaiju, if you like films, um, collectibles, Funko Pops, anything like that, go ahead and click subscribe down below and also be sure to hit that notification bell down below so that way you won't miss any of my future content. So thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.